from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and Akashvani. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in London. Uh, I've been away with the dogs. I've just got back from Crufts, commentating on the world's biggest dog show in Birmingham, where, notably, an Australian shepherd won best in show. So there was a little bit of fun on social media amongst cricket fans who might say, well, you know, there we go, another Aussie winning on English soil. (laughs) But I have to tell you, the Australian shepherd actually originates in America. But, you know, Jim, you Aussies will claim anything, won't you? Well, they will. It's Jim Maxwell in Sydney, uh, recently back from New Zealand, where Australian, well, the dogs, the cricketers were barking at the New Zealanders and came up with two wins, the, the second of which was uh, absolutely remarkable. So nice to be back having a chat with you. And I'm Sunil Gupta for Akashvani and uh, with the news that Mumbai have won the Ranji Trophy, which is our premier Red Bull uh, championship, as you know, for the 42nd time. And that's saying something. That's very, that's longevity for you. And of course, the WPL is winding up into a terrific climax. Yeah, Mumbai doing pretty well there as well. Sinan and Jim, great to see you both. Now, on this week's Stumped, we're going to be looking at the value of reaching 100 test match appearances and ask if it still has the same significance as it used to. But first, if I said simply magnificent, an exemplary example of longevity, skill and fitness, a superb achievement, his skill is a joke, Who would I be talking about? Well, those are just some of the phrases that have been used to describe Jimmy Anderson's achievements of reaching 700 test wickets, becoming the first seamer ever in the history of the game to do so in test cricket. Now, Anderson is 41 years old, which is himself is remarkable. Uh, Only the third bowler ever to reach that milestone with only the great spinners Shane Warne with 708 and Matar Muralithran with 800 ahead of him on the all-time list and he reached the milestone in 187 tests at a career average of 26.52 which is also exemplary. Uh, India's Kuldeep Yadav was his 700th test victim in the match in Dharamshala. So rather than talk about the ins and outs of Anderson's bowling skills and how he's been able to keep himself so fit and motivated to achieve such a milestone that will likely never be repeated, we thought we'd talk to someone who knows him well off the cricket field and does a loosely cricket-based podcast with Anderson called Tailenders. Welcome to Stumped, the Maccabees and 86 TV's guitarist Felix White. How are you doing, Fee? I'm really good, Ali. Thank you very much for having me. Jimmy's attitude to taking 700 wickets, Mm. it was like it was a nuisance to him to have taken them (laughs) and to have to answer questions about it, which really sums up his attitude. Because we had him on um, Tailenders very recently to talk about it Mm. and he was obviously pumped and hyped and wanted to sort of like shower him with praise. But he's so reluctant to even go anywhere Mm. near it, especially given what's happened in um, India and losing 4-1 and being really disappointed by it um but it is a pretty remarkable achievement isn't it and i tried not to say it to him because um i worry that it ages him but it is a bradmanesque achievement that in these people will be saying there was a fast bowler once who took 700 test wickets you know and no one will be able Mm. to believe it really and we are all lucky that we're living through this era and and that you've got to know him so well uh, off the field in this time. I mean, tell us about the Jimmy that that you have got to know. And I mean, knowing him as you do as well, how do you think he has managed to be such a, a great bowler and stay at the top for so long? It's, well, it's a really good question. And when we first started doing Tailenders, it was six years ago and it was supposed to be a few episodes out in Australia in what we all assumed would be the last time Jimmy was in Australia mm. playing really, or playing test cricket. So if we thought maybe, I thought oh, that would be incredible to be with this great at that period of time, but he's gone on to average 22 roughly, I think in the last six years since then, which is pretty remarkable, but I've got to know him as a person. And sometimes I forget that he is the Jimmy Anderson that I've watched play cricket for so long. And you're always probing that, like what is it that makes Jimmy Jimmy? How has he been able to do what he's been able to do. But I, firstly, I think he's just got a miraculous body and work ethic, which not many people do. But being a musician, the thing that I um, always think is really fascinating about Jim is when we're playing music, he um, he wants to know how everything works. So when we go on tour and do, um, like we have a band and stuff on Tail Enders, or he comes and sees the Maccabees or sees 86 TVs, he wants to know 
how the pedals work, how the sound gets through the speaker to there. He's quite in, he's very interested in technical things. So I always think that's really interesting that his brain works that way, that he needs to know how one thing happens because mine yeah. doesn't. I'm, I'm sort of more um, interested in emotion and feeling, but Jimmy needs to know like, oh, how does that work? So I always feel like, oh, that's quite interesting because he's he's had that sort of te- analytical approach to bowling where he, the curiosity, just he needs to know how to do stuff and how to make it happen. Jim, um, you know, as an Aussie, there's a lot of respect for Jimmy Anderson, isn't there? Despite him being on the opposition, have you got sort of a favourite moment, you know, a time of either watching him bowl or simply spending time with him? I suppose my memories, other than him hitting Shane Watson on the pads in front of the stumps again, or hitting the stumps, or hitting the outside edge, is his batting with Monty Panesar uh, in Cardiff (laughs) in 2009 uh, when he saved the test. So there's always something alternate that you remember about people other than what they're famous for. And that was certainly something that made him very famous and uh, had a, a huge impact, um, obviously, on that game, but on the series because uh, England ended up uh, retaining the Ashes. But, uh, yes, um, a phenomenon. Bradman was, Shane Warne was, this guy is. There will never be a fast bowling phenomenon like Jimmy Anderson uh, again. It, it's not possible. And um, I'm, maybe you can get to 800 the way he's going. He never seems to break down. <laughs> so yeah, remarkable. Maybe he'll be here for the Ashes in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Felix, have you got a favourite memory of, of watching him bowl? We've talked about some yeah. of the off-field stuff. I definitely like Jim. I've got a lot of good memories of watching him bat. And I, especially, <laughs> I, I definitely like uh, how he looks com- perennially very concerned when he bats. The way his um, eyebrows yeah. turn like that, it's like... <laughs> Very yeah. rare to see an elite sports person just so out of their depth so regularly, which is one of the beautiful things that cricket gives you, isn't it? But in, t- in terms of bowling, I um, what's but I mean, I loved four years ago in India when he got Rahani and Pajara, I think it was, in the same over, one going away and one coming back in. That was a beautiful thing. Obviously, 10 11 has got a lot of amazing moments. I, I always really, um, as an apocalyptic moment in English cricket, really remember. Hoggard and Harmison getting dropped and Broad and Anderson taking those wickets out in New Zealand, I think it was. I was on that tour, yeah. Yeah, which was felt like such a big deal at the time, wasn't it? Because they were yeah. such epic figures in English cricket, Hoggard and Harmison. Um, and then I've, I, another special one, actually, is after getting dropped to, um, for the West Indies tour, coming back and being yeah. part of that early stages of the Basball era in that New Zealand, South Africa thing. I've, there's, a, there's a lot of reinventions to Jimmy across his career. He's like David Bowie. <laughs> There's a lot of different eras and reinventions, and it's just up to you which one your favourite one is. Felix, this is Sunil in New Delhi, uh, and my abiding memory of Jimmy Anderson is that he's always there at the Indian's throat, always getting Virat Kohli out caught mm. in first second slip. It's amazing. I mean, that's that's absolutely my abiding memory, and it's been there for many many years. Every time India tours England, for how long do you think he'll carry on? I mean, I'm you've answered part of that question, but. Purely 41, and 41 for a fast bowler is terrific. For Not so much for a spin bowler, but for a fast bowler. Do you think as uh, it'll be his last summer, or will he last out till the next Ashes, as Jim was so firmly did for? Daniel, if I was brave enough to ask that question, I'd be asking him every single week on Tailenders, but I'm not, because I, yeah. I'm not because I know the look he's going to get. And honestly, don't forget when you mentioned yeah. Cody, don't forget he got Tendulkar out more than any other test bowler in history as well. So that's how far back the legacy goes. I, d- I don't know retiring. I've given up ans- asking him that question. Mm. And I, the thing that I really love about Jim is that with a lot of t- test cricketers that have gone on that for that long, that period of time, you sense that they feel like they're going to have a legacy moment. So obviously Stuart Broad last summer, but e- in English cricket, you think back to everyone really, Hussain, Atherton, you, you feel like they're working towards a moment where they're going to go out and they're going to be remembered by I genuinely don't think Jimmy's brain works like that at all. He's never, you never feel like he's manifesting or manipulating a situation where um, he bows out at his peak and everyone sort of, there's an ovation and all that kind of thing. I think it's as simple as he was put on this earth to bowl and he's going to do it for as long as he can. And if that's at the highest level, then that's amazing. You'd, you'd feel that for the fans, they would want, 
James Anderson to have a, a finale, a send off moment like Stuart Broad did last year at the at the end of the series. I mean, woe betide any, you know, who's going to be the selector or the coach that says, you know what, Jimmy, we want to move on without you. And, you know, there might be some noises, you know, a- around that just simply because of his age. But I mean, his performances and his fitness just show that he's he's still highly capable uh, and highly skilled and still doing it at the moment. I mean, I wonder whether he could not so much about whether he'll get another 100 uh, wickets to reach the 800, but can he reach another 13 test matches, which would match Tendulkar's 200 caps? Wow. Has that ever been spoken about with him, Felix? Mm. Do you know what? He, he doesn't. We, we don't mention any of that stuff. I, I actually, I bumped into uh, me and Greg, and um, obviously, you know, Ali, who presents Tail Enders with me, we bumped into Stuart Broad in his last test, sort of like back by the dressing rooms, and Stuart Broad said... You, in like privacy oh I think Jimmy just wants 700 so I think Stuart Broad thinks like that but I just having spoken to Jimmy last week I just don't think he thinks about it I think he just wants to play cricket and it's like Joe you know I think about it? it's like um dancing or or dances or something like you feel like oh you, you were put on this earth to do this thing so why are you going to stop when that's what you're mm. on this planet, just for whatever other people might think of different legacies, you know, even think of um, people like Jonathan Trott and Alistair Cook, even past that they, they still played when they couldn't at the highest level. The problem Jimmy has is he's still capable of doing it at the elite level. So he's going to be badgered about mm. it forever, you know? Um, but I, I, I actually think it would be the most Jimmy thing ever to just go out in some random place without, all of that kind of hysterics around him and just walk off into the sunset. And then he can happily do tail enders with me and just ask me <laughs> what do for the rest of his life. And I'll be delighted. Yeah. And play the guitar, I think. <laughs> well, I, do you know what? He does play the guitar, Sunil. He does play the guitar, but... Um, he needs a bit of help though, right? I'll let you that. into secret. <laughs> he is not as blessed on the guitar as he is with a cricket ball. And I'll leave it there. You're very polite. <laughs> <laughs> that is Felix White, guitarist from the Maccabees and 86 TVs and co-host with James Anderson of the Tail Enders podcast. Now, the 100 Test Club has grown by four after England's Johnny Bairstow, India's Ravi Chandran Ashwin and the New Zealand pair of Kane Williamson and Tim Southey all collected their 100th cap in recent tests. The club itself now has 80 members in all. And I did think about getting you, Jim and Sunil, to uh, name all 80 but we won't do that. <laughs> and we will instead ask whether, you know, does 100 test matches have the same significance as it used to? Uh, it was a milestone rightly celebrated by all those mentioned above and a chance to reflect on just what they've achieved uh, over the course of their careers. But to what extent should the number of caps correlate with how great a cricketer someone is? Now, before we get stuck into that, though, Sonal, I will just ask you about Ashwin specifically, who marked his 100th test by taking five for 77 and nine wickets in the match to win that final test uh, for India against England in Dharamshala. I mean, just how special a performance was that? Well, you took the first line of my reply by saying nine in the match. But yes, it was nine in the match. We tend to forget that. Of course, the performance was special because it helped India win 4-1 after losing that first test match. But... You know, it just begs the question, and I'm going to move away from that for a moment, as to why he did not play the the World Test Championship final in June, in a baking June month, a week at the Oval, when he played four seamers and did not play the world's number one bowler and then went on to lose the match. It's it's, it's astonishing. It's, It's... I mean, you know, you you cannot answer that question. You can ask it many times. And the other aspect of his performance, not just in Dhamshala, but over his career, is that if you know, he's not the first choice overseas. It's always Jadeja if you're playing one spinner. So he must have lost out at least 20, 25 test matches. And to say now he's the guy who's actually reached 100 tests and has made, you know, 516 wickets, uh, that that's saying something. That really is saying something. So I think that... Um, the, the performance in India has always been very good. The performance um, outside India, which perhaps has you know, figured in their calculations why he shouldn't play, or is, is the fact that he's actually, his average is slightly higher. He's only taken 149 wickets in about 40 test matches. But we must add to his achievements by saying he's scored five test centuries. You know, you cannot get away from that. He's helped India 
win matches from desperate situations. I remember in Bangladesh, in about 46 for seven or something, went on to win the match in the company of Akshar Patel. And of course, you'll remember that match at Sydney, Jim, when India were there and he helped along with Hanuma Bahari to draw that test match. You know, so mm -hmm. that he went in, into the Gabba one all and went on to win the series. So he can bat, there's no question. He, he started off as an opener, by the way, in his, you know, when he started playing cricket. So it's always been baffling to me as to why he's not played more abroad, but it is phenomenal. And he's been through so many aches and pains and niggles. And as you know, in the last test match at Rajkot, he had to go home because his mother had fallen seriously ill. He went back in the middle of the test match. And yet he came back to finish the test match. And that actually, I think, sums up Ashwin more than anything else that you'll ever find. Yeah, an extraordinary bowler. Jim, um, I'll ask you about Southie and Williamson in a moment because you've been there in New Zealand while they were receiving their 100th test caps. But, you know, I went through those 80 players who have picked up 100 test caps and just looked at the spread country by country. And over half of them are from either England, India or Australia, the so-called big three. So notably, those are countries who have A, been playing test cricket the longest and B, historically play more tests uh, than the other nations on a year by year basis. Mm. But Jim, sort of given that, I mean, there's only Southie and Williamson, the fifth and the sixth from New Zealand to do it. Given that, how big an achievement is it for those two to have reached 100 tests? Anyone who gets to 100 tests, it's a serious achievement, serious milestone. But the fact that there are 80 now, it just takes a bit of gloss over the uh, significance of 100. I think it was at Cowdery was the first one to reach 100 mm, yeah. uh, some time ago. And that was certainly significant, um, given that they didn't play as much as they play uh, today. But, you know, once you get past the first person who's done it, then you're starting to ramp it up. Are you going to say 150, 200? I mean, where do we want to take it? But... Uh, yeah, I mean, any opportunity to recognise long-serving players in this way is important. Um, but I was staggered when I saw that number 80. I didn't I didn't think for a moment that there were as, as many as that. But um, uh, And that's probably why, as, as we move on, um, it will become a more significant number because uh, probably, I'm not sure, but probably we won't be playing as much test cricket per calendar year even amongst the big three uh, in another 10 years uh, than we're playing now because of um, these long franchise competitions, um, including the IPL. Mm -hmm. Does the IPL go 10 weeks this year? Goodness gracious. It does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten yeah, weeks, does, yeah. that's yeah. ridiculous. And just a final thought, Jim, because, you know, you are allowed to get a little bit sentimental and caps do mean something because I believe you were presented with a milestone cap for 40 years of service on grandstand, were you not? Ten years ago, yes, that's true. And uh, they must have thought I was going to fall off the twig because I'm still going. <laughs> still going. Good. Well, that's good news for us, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, that is all yes. we've got time for on this week's Stumps. So I will say thanks to Jim Maxwell and to Sunil Gupta and, of course, to Felix White as well and to all of you for listening. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.